recognize that tune there and you know that it's time for digging with seven and tennessee jeff we're on relics radio for the next hour set back we're going to talk about metal detecting we're going to talk about all things relics we're going to have a special guest here in a moment we're going to watch the chat and try to get some of your questions in on today's program so sit back and enjoy relics radio where we talk all things relics Here we go. My yeah, first here podcast. we go. Our very first podcast, and we already have Larry. We've got uh, Gordon on, and uh, we're going to have uh, Keebs on here in just a moment. We certainly do appreciate you tuning in. We to, sure do. To the very first uh, uh, Relics Radio. I'm your co host, uh, Digging with Seven. And then I'm your next one, Tennessee Jeff. That's right. And we're going to have the Keebler on. We're going to be on for an hour tonight, uh, thereabouts. If things get to going real good, well, uh, we're going to, uh, we may extend that just a little bit. Got a little treat for you at the end of the show tonight uh, Mm -hmm. from Keeps. And uh, speaking of Keeps, Keeps, are you there? Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, I hear you loud and clear. (laughs) That's good. How you doing, Keeps? Oh, good. Well, you know, I've been, I've been, sitting over here at the hotel that you gentlemen graciously provided for me. I spent the day down in the hair salon getting my hair done, my <laughs> nails done. I waited for the, uh, the limousine, and here I am. Lemo picked me up, and voila. Well, hey, there you go. Yeah. Now, this is Jeff's first time in the studio. and he, he It is. It is. My he, first time. He's looking around and seeing yeah, all, the, all the little stuff going on, and I'm like, what's that? What's that? And he's like, oh, yeah. don't touch that. Don't touch that. That's right. As long as you don't touch any knobs, we're going to be all right. Well, I can help out. I mean, I'm yeah. just trying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Keebs and I, uh, yeah. I noticed in, on social media this afternoon, Keebs said, I sure hope that they send me cookies. And I tell you what, Keebs, we've been trying <laughs> Uh, we've been trying and trying and trying with our teleporter to uh, get the cookies to go through. Well, he keeps on eating them. That's that's the problem. Well, that's part oh. of it. That's part of it. But uh, we uh, the, uh, the the teleporter keeps uh, you know it's stopping up with the uh, with the chocolate chips and everything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, but now Jeff said he's got some. What'd you say that we could do to get those cookies to get to keep? Well, if you just stop eating them, and then well, I'll I'll, I'll tell you, I'll start making them, and then we'll send them. I oh. mean, we get them there that way. Well, Jeff brought something. Now that I don't, well, we're going to see if we can uh, make it work right here. And did you get it? Holy cow! Look at the cookies. Uh, well, it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. It's been a great time being a guest. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the limo won't be there until we get finished yeah. here. Oh, that's right. Uh, oh, well. Uh, certainly do appreciate so I'm not going to jump in on I'm not going to jump in on the chat. I'm going to say hello to Larry and Gordon. That's the buddies out there. It yeah. is. Uh, mm-hmm. We're already getting yeah. some we're already getting some heavy hitters in here. Uh, and, ah, that's, that's good. We, yeah, that's really we good. we appreciate that. Let me say just a little bit about Keebs. Uh, the Stealth Digger Nation was gracious enough to let us have him tonight. Uh, as you know, their video comes out at 6 o'clock uh, every uh, Thursday night. That would be 7 o'clock Eastern time. And uh, when you finish watching that video, hopefully you will join us here on the podcast. Uh, I see Patrick has come in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, appreciate you, Patrick, yeah. coming in. Hello, Patrick. And... Uh, 
but uh, we certainly do appreciate uh, keeps. Uh, you know, I've got a confession to make, and then I'm going to stop and, and uh, let you and Jeff kind of chime in. I was on a uh, years back. I don't know. It's probably been seven years, maybe six years, something like that. I was uh, on forums was all that I was on and nobody on the forum liked flat buttons. And I was just kind of going through the, uh, through YouTube and looking at some uh, metal detecting videos. And I ran across stealth diggers and I watched the first episode of, uh, of, of y'all. And, uh, I fell in love with, uh, your channel. Y'all do a great job. And I thought, now there's some guys right there that do the same kind of hunting that I like to do. And uh, they make it fun, and so uh, you've been a big influence on me. Well, thank you. <laughs> that, that, that's right. You have been. But uh, I had a few questions for you, Keebs, if uh, you was up for it. Um, um, sure. No, okay. I was going to ask you, uh, uh, what, what's about your favorite detector? What do you use on your detector-wise? Well, uh, now I'm using the XP DAS. XP DAS. Yeah. And, uh, but before that, I was a big mind lab guy. Mm-hmm. Only because that's what I was doing. Uh, uh, I was basically coin shooting. Uh, and mind labs are very good for that. Mm-hmm. And right up, right up until about four years ago, you couldn't tell me any different. Um, but then, of course, I ran into Charlie. Actually, I stalked him until I found him. <laughs> <laughs> And come to find out, he lives ten minutes from me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's and, good. Uh, yeah, and, and and you know, as good as mine labs are, they just weren't suited for me in the woods. They yeah, were in yeah. the woods all the time. Very rarely are we in the fields or uh, uh, library lawns and such. You know, so um, I saw. The XP dance, I said, I'm going to give it a try. Now, remember, we're out there eight, ten hours a day. Mm-hmm. And the, the XP dance is one of the lightest machines out there, if not the lightest. And it, it was just a perfect fit for what I was doing. Yeah, I've, I've never even operated one. Uh, I've actually never held one. And I've thought about getting one at one time, but, I mean, I just I never did. So, um, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you something, uh, because I, I'm sure that uh, – that we will have people that will listen to this program and wonder, you know, uh, that's a machine that has several different programs. And what program have you settled in, like when you're hunting these old cellar holes and things? Well, um, I like Relic. Um, the, the Relic program is uh, very deep. Um, it tells me, well, it talks to me, of course, and... Uh, mm. I do very little, uh, well, I do change it up some with the uh, Relic program itself. Uh, I'll change it so that uh, the ground will tell me what I need to do uh, with the machine. And with with the XP DAS, I can make it several different machines. You you have several different machines at your hands with just one. I can make it into an AT Pro or a Gold or a White. I mean... Whatever I wanted, I can go to the beach if I wanted to with it. Huh. Like relic, relic mode is the way I go with it. Uh, Gordon just asked, "What uh, <laughs> you see it? I guess because you're laughing. What is your oxen yeah. shoe program?" <laughs> well, that, that's that's secret. I'm not telling anybody that one. <laughs> you got the eye on. You got the eye on. <laughs> if you, <laughs> I got it. I, yeah. If, hello, Sheldon. If you guys haven't seen uh, that uh, that episode where uh, and Charlie will throw that back in every now and then and it's great. He's what are you in a live trap on that? Uh, yeah, yeah, a, a large have a have a heart trap. Yeah, and uh, he's he's up in there. I got the iron. I got the iron, and it's it's yeah, hilarious. They, 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 they baited it with an oxen shoe, and I fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's Sheldon. We appreciate you being in there, Sheldon, sure do. tonight. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jeff and I, of course, you know this because uh, I've uh, I've sent you messages before, but I think I've only found three oxen shoes in my entire career 
We just don't have them. No, yet. we don't. I've only found two in my entire hunting career. But you're who yeah, I, f- uh, I think of you every time I see one. Yeah, oh, great. I, I, the whole detecting community does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, around your area, it was more work horses and work ponies, I believe. Yeah, see, we find several horseshoes and work, work horseshoes. I mean, you could tell the difference. Yeah. Some of them smaller and some of them bigger, but yeah. But oxen shoes, mm-hmm. we just don't have them. Now, I mean, down where I'm from, we had a lot of colonial and uh, uh, colonial relics. And every now and then, you'll see some hanging on barns and stuff that uh, people farmers hang up, hung up in the, back in the day. So, but yes, finding them wise, we just don't find them like you guys do. We do find a lot of mule shoes because uh, mules were were big here, you know. And you have to get uh-huh. you have to get on a real early site in order to find a. Uh, and we have some some early sites uh, here. Uh, probably, well, they settled our county in 1798 was when they gave the land grants out, but there were people here prior to that. Of course, you, the history where you're at there uh, predates that quite a bit because, uh, you know, there were people there way before they were here. So that probably accounts oh, yeah. for some of it. Let me ask you a question, though. You've noticed the difference. Uh, we have no large sense, relatively speaking, here, but we've got a lot of mm-hmm. Spanish silver, and it seems like it's exactly the opposite where you are. It It is. Um, and the question being why? Yeah, why? Well, the biggest reason would be up around here, the people were basically poor dirt farmers. They only had those few pennies to lose. If they had any silver, it was not carried in their pockets. It was definitely left at home. It only brought out that one trip a month to town to purchase goods. How many Spanish silvers have you found? Uh, well, let's just say since you've been with Stealth Diggers, how many have you found? Uh, with Stealth Diggers, only one. Only one. Only one. Only one. But uh, prior to that, uh, three. 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 And, yep. you, and you couldn't count the number of uh, big coppers that you found, I don't guess, could you? Um, I, I, no, it's, it's right up there with oxen shoes. Yeah. Man. I wish that it was that way here, but it's just not now. Uh, yeah. You were t- well, you were talking about uh, your dais there a while ago. Uh, did yeah. you did you ever use an AT Pro? Did you ever think about using an AT Pro? Oh, I I, I do have an AT Pro, as does my son Kyle. Uh, keep us on. Uh, uh, it's my backup. Okay, that is what we use at. Uh, at uh, our house out, you know, where we have a lot of iron nails and a lot of trash and everything. That, to yeah. me, is a perfect machine for that. But I wasn't aware that that XP DAS, that you could program it like the other machines. I wasn't aware right. of that either. I mean, I know how light that that is. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's part of the uh, part of the appeal of it, isn't it? Is uh, is the weight of the uh, or the lack of weight with the XP DAS? Yeah, yeah, and, and like I said, you know, eight ten hours, it, the XP DAS does get a little heavy at the end of the day, and I can never see me out there with a, um, with any other machine except for maybe like the AT Pro or the AT Gold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, of course, we use AT Pro, like he said, a lot. And, then, of course, I found I have found probably 95% of my relics with the AT Pro. And then, then I went to the uh, Fisher F75, and I used it for a little while. It, it took me a while to get used to it. But then, I mean, it doesn't go through the uh, iron like the uh, uh, AT Pro does. The F75 doesn't. So uh, yeah. we was talking about a, a large sense of stuff. What's your uh, favorite is fine that you found? Oh gosh! Uh, oh, well, this game there's so many. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably the one that that may you know 
in the videos, when there's ever a swear word, it gets barked out, as you know. Uh huh. Yeah. I, <laughs> I myself, I, I never swear. But there was a barking moment for me when I found uh, my eagle belt buckle. Mm hmm. That was a great I mean, find. Yeah, it was a great find. It was. Yeah. I, I mean, gosh, that, and that buckle, uh, I thought myself I would have to travel down around you guys to be able to find something like that. And I was really amazed and happy when I found that. Yeah. Of course, I have been blessed with finding a uh, few Civil War belt buckles. Uh, what about gold coins? Have you ever found a gold coin? Yeah, two in one hole. No, two? No, oh, man, you got me there. That was a good one. I was like, man, I was going to turn flips for you. Yeah. Well, let's see. There's, there are a few questions about the XP dance and uh, yeah. uh, how often do I change coils? That's from Gordon. Right. Gordon, I, I have uh, all three coils that are, are uh, provided. I mainly use the medium size, which is the 11. I sometimes use the 9, which is smaller. I've never used the big 13-inch. Uh, what else? Uh, can you use 4, 8, 12 frequencies with the included coil? Yes, I can. Uh, it's just a matter of changing the programs. The XP is not a water machine. True, it's not waterproof. Everything is waterproof except for the... Uh, uh, the, the, the mechanism, uh, the brains of the situation, but you can uh, adapt it and use a iPhone 5 waterproof case, which somebody hmm. sent me from, I think, England. They made it up for me and sent it. Huh. And that makes that makes the head then, the, uh, uh, the module, it, it makes it waterproof then. You can put it in that. Correct. So is it is it about the same size as an iPhone? The control iPhone box? five, yep. No yep. kidding. An iPhone five. Well, I guess that's what makes it so light then. Yeah. Uh, I was looking yeah. uh, looking back on the chat there, uh, just a little bit, and uh, Sheldon said that he had only found uh, one of the uh, Spanish silver. I think I can't uh, I can't get back to it now, but. Uh, uh, we we've, we've been fairly lucky. Uh, I'm about to kill Jeff, though. Uh, he, <laughs> I have been blessed. Yeah. Yep. I did real well this uh, last uh, fall and winter, and uh, then in February. And uh, but I've I've kind of hit a dry spell. He's making me look bad here. Over the last uh, three or four or five weeks, he's finding all the good stuff. He's got another good one that's. Uh, uh, no, Sheldon said he's got two Spanish. Maybe he said he just found only one large scent. That's what's hard to find for him as well. Mm-hmm. My bad. But uh, anyway, uh, he's got a real good find that's coming up uh, on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It was unexpected find. I, I never thought in a million years I'd found it where I found it. So yeah. I can't wait. What is your most other than the other than the uh, uh, sword? belt plate what is your most yeah. shocking find that you found the one that just put you back uh, on your heels well, probably that civil war pistol yeah that's a good find yeah 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 um that i i was truly truly beside myself on that it was like i find you know, the kids cap guns all the time. Mm-hmm. But that truly was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I found some kid cap guns, but I never found a Civil War pistol. Nick said if you upgrade to the V4 on the uh, Adeus, that you can use the new high-frequency coils and the MI6 pinpointer. And he said Correct. that he said the Relic program is known as deep in the uh, V4. I guess you're aware of that. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I've yet to upgrade only because I know um, the programming that's in the uh, the version three, I guess three point two, like the back of my hand. And yes, relic is deep. Believe me, it, it goes. I found uh, well um, a half real at over a foot. That's pretty deep. That is deep. That is deep. That's pretty deep. Yeah, yeah. 
And a half real, for those of you that don't know, is about the size of a trime. It's uh, smaller than a half dime, or pretty yeah. close to a half yeah. dime. And yeah. de- depending on the orientation of those, they can be very, very difficult to find. True. They have to be laying flat. They do. If you have that balance back, yeah. Uh, and with good ground conditions as well. If the ground conditions aren't there, you, you, you're not going to find anything. No, 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 that's true. You sure won't. A couple of shout-outs here real quick. Quarter Hoarder is in with us, and uh, Gordon asked me a question uh, how did I learn the uh, bullets just by finding them and going home and doing the research? I've got uh, I've got several bullet books, and uh, I call Jeff quite a bit, too. Jeff's a little bit more knowledgeable on bullets than I am. Well, the same way I do research, and I've got a book at the house that pretty much tells me. And, it, of course, I have found a couple that's not in the book, and then I have to go elsewhere. But, I mean, for the biggest part... We can figure it out. So. Let me say this. I, I have a lot of people that send me bullets in one of my ID. And uh, in order to get an accurate ID on a bullet, you're going to have to have a set of calipers. And you're going to have to measure the diameter of a bullet. And you're going to have to measure the length. And then you need a little scale to measure the weight in grains. And that's mm-hmm. the way that these, well, that's the way all of my books show them, you know is the weight in in grains but uh you know you're able to uh you're able to uh kind of id them like that and then hopefully keep them in memory but now my old mind's getting a little bit weak <laughs> <laughs> it's uh there's a person rain people where did you find the real i found it right here in saskatchewan right there where is saskatchewan <laughs> it's, it's, it's my hometown. We we refer to it as Saskatchewan. Yeah, Saskatchewan. Uh, I know that uh, I know that you're you probably don't want to give out too too much information, but give us a general area in New Hampshire uh, where you're located. Uh, southwest. Southwest. Okay. Well, that's yeah. a little that's a little closer to us. Uh, Keebs and I have talked about uh, me making a trip up there, and I just haven't been able to get it all together yet. Uh, Jeff and I, back in the spring, we went to Virginia, and uh, uh, it about killed me, I tell you. It, it gets rougher every year. I mean, you pretty much, you look, you see a hillside, well, let's go over there, and then two hours later, you finally make it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. of course, I mean, you've got a chance of finding a real nice relic there. I mean, something we can't find here or anywhere else in uh or part of Tennessee, but I mean, I did find a good Virginia button this uh, past year, and I mean that was worth the hunt. So. Quarter hoarder there said, you go. "Quarter hoarder said he thought Saskatchewan Sascot- was a country." That's easy for me <laughs> to say, isn't it? <laughs> Saskatchewan. Well, there uh, th- th- there is a province in Canada that sounds like Saskatchewan. Yeah, Saskatchewan. But uh, yeah. But you would not believe the amount of people who contact me. I can't find it. I'm <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I figured that out pretty quick myself. But uh, yeah. yeah, quarter hoarder. He he thinks it's a country. Uh, but uh, you you have to excuse no. him. He's a he's a country boy like me. And if I can give a plug while I'm at it too, uh, a quarter mm-hmm. hoarder is also on uh, YouTube and he's doing some YouTube live. And I'm going to do a live show with him. Coming up this Monday night, he uh, asked me to do that, and I'm very honored to uh, to uh, do that. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the time. I'm sure that he'll chime in and put that here uh, in just a minute. Uh, and Sheldon yeah. said, if, if you come, let me know, and I certainly will. No, uh, see, so he said uh, he'd only found one three-ringer ever, and, I mean, if— we, we we may be able to help him out with that sometime. Yeah, if you come down here, uh, Sheldon, we will put you on a three-ringer. Mm-hmm. Uh, a large scent? No, we can't get you no. a large scent. But, uh, if you, maybe a real, too. Uh, maybe a real. You know, I had a, I had a guy that came from, uh, uh, where was it he came from? Ohio, I think, mm-hmm. and uh, came down. And uh, Dave, uh, American Cohen Hunter, he came down and uh, wanted to hunt for one day, and I... I had an old colonial site that I'd worked just a little bit. Uh, 
And uh, court order said that's at 7.30 Eastern time. Anyway, uh, put him on a colonial site, and the first thing he found there was a uh, real and So I was I was very tickled with that. It's, very good. Yep. Now, you, you, you both brought up something just a while back, uh, all about the hunting. There's aspects in it that I enjoy just as much as out there detecting. Number one being... The research, mm-hmm. searching for those places, searching. Uh, Charlie and I will we'll just hike for miles just to know the area. That in itself is the adventure of it. Can't can't say enough about it. The other better thing, just as good, I should say, is the research of your finds. Unbelievable. It is. That's that. That to me is is worth the uh, 10 hours of sweat and toil. Mm-hmm, it is. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I spend more time on my history clips than I do research and hunting put together. Uh, research, you know, look oh, at, yeah. look, looking for a site. But that is, that is uh, it's really gratifying. Uh, Jeff found a, uh, what was that that you found at uh, at the fort that time? Oh, the uh, uh, the core badge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a heart. I mean, it was it was beautiful. Really, didn't know what it was at the time. Just thought it was a card piece of lead. But later on, we got it home, cleaned it up, and you could tell it had two holes in it where it was attached to something. And then after what? How many hours of research? Uh, Sixteen hours of research. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, we could place the thirteenth uh, 13, uh, corpse uh, at this fort, and then of course at the. They wasn't supposed to have a uh, core badge. And then, uh, of course, Lloyd, he'd found a uh, diary that had a page in it. And this guy, he uh, uh, said that the 13th Corps went under a heart for a core badge. But, they, I mean, in the history books, they're not supposed to have one. But Yeah, and if it hadn't been for that that one diary page, he drew all these out uh, where McClellan, yeah. uh he was with them. And, and if he hadn't drawn that out, if somebody hadn't saved that – and I just lucked on it, but it was it was a lot of research. But you're right, researching the finds and mm-hmm. uh, finding that. <laughs> Larry chimed in and said that uh, if you want to find a, a three ring or just hang out at the bank parking lot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's referring to uh, the uh, site, the Civil War site at the construction site where they're putting a bank in in Gallatin, Tennessee. That Jeff and I were fortunate enough to get three or four videos from, mm-hmm. and yeah. we're fortunate enough to. Uh, we're going to Nashville tomorrow night. The Middle Tennessee Metal Detecting Club. And uh, we're going to do a presentation there on, on uh, those things. Another thing. Uh, Very good. I know that y'all are about like us. Uh, you donate a lot of your fines to the local area there, don't you? Museums and what have you. Without a doubt. That, is, that in itself is what we're really all about. Uh, local historical societies, museums, will bring this stuff to them with full documentation, and they proudly display them. Um, uh, gosh, I just cannot say enough of how, you know, there's so many people who dig things and they put them in a shoebox, and it's still in their closet years later mm-hmm. where it should be proudly displayed. And Jeff will tell you uh, the site that we, the last one that we hunted. Oh, yes, uh, the last site we hunted. And then, uh, of course, the landowner, uh, she's big in the, on the museum here in, uh, in Gallatin. And, of course, the relics we found, we found quite a few flat buttons and stuff. And then, uh, of course, they're going in the display cabinet. And then, of course, the old uh, plantation house is still standing. So we're going to let the uh, landowner uh, display them in the home. So. And that way, everybody in the community, it's their history, but everybody mm-hmm. in the community gets to, uh, you know, gets to share in what, uh, you know, you had the uh, the exhilaration of finding that, identifying it, and uh, documenting mm-hmm. it and everything. But uh, it to me, it's equally gratifying to share it, yeah. don't you think? It's like some of the uh, oh, yeah. relics that I found at the uh, construction site. I mean, a lot of them are going to the museum where, I mean, it can be shared. People come and see them. I mean course i can yeah i've got a few relics hanging on the wall but i'd rather it be there where other people can see it nice very good very good 
I applaud you. Has that opened doors for you guys to hunt places that you might not have been able to? On occasion, uh, yes. It has for us. It, uh, in fact, we have, uh, you know, amateur historians in our areas and they will holler at us and they'll say, you know, there's no chimney site here or here. You know, you guys need to go and look at that. And I don't think that they would do that if we weren't as visible, uh, as we are really. And, uh, show those, uh, show those, uh, the finds, you know, and, and put them in the museum and what have you. But I applaud, I applaud you guys, uh, for doing that. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, Charlie makes mention of that often. And I think that, uh, I think that that's a good thing that he does that to, you know, let the, yeah. Uh, yeah. L- let people that are not, you know, really associated with metal detecting know a little bit more about what we're about. You know, we're, we're, we're not just out trying to pillage and everything. We're trying to save history, but we're trying to record history at the same time. Exactly. Um, we've even had people find on display their ancestors' personal items, and that is really gratifying. It is. It is it, there's no doubt about it. Let me ask you a question. How many relics that come to mind with you that you have found that you can put with a specific person? Uh, Most of the sites we go to, we know the name of the original settler. So um, if it's period, it has to be theirs. So a large majority of the things, yes, we know who 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 lost that. Well, lead button or uh, flat button. Well, see, I, you found a nice find uh, at the uh, construction site that you placed a name. I did. Uh, first, I'll get to that, but uh, John Hunt Morgan, the uh, Confederate raider, came through here in uh, 1862 and uh he uh this was the first stop the the battle site that we hunt here is uh his very first battle on his uh first raid into into kentucky but uh yeah. then sometime later he came back and in retaliation for uh the union burning the uh, courthouse in salina tennessee which is just across the line from us john hunt morgan burnt our courthouse and we are void of information past 1864, 1865. All of those records were burned. And so, you know, oh, it, it is hard for us to, to find anything. And the find that uh, Jeff was talking about was the most unlikely find that uh, that was probably made at that Gallatin site. I found a uh, little brass uh shoulder bar that went to uh would go on a a soldier's shoulder and the way that it was made the captain had uh, two bars on each side and the first lieutenant had one and the way that these bars were made we knew it was a first lieutenant and then the research that i did on that i found out that uh, the first lieutenant with that group that was there at gallatin was a guy by the name of theodore brown and so that's probably, out of everything that I've ever found, that's probably my favorite find of all because I can I know the guy that lost it and I know a little bit of history about that guy, and to me it just makes things uh, you know special. Hey, Dave Miller. Yeah. Hello, Dave. Hi, How Dave. you doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, all the time, Dave. All the time. Uh, uh, the old maps do have names on them, and when we're uh, on a particular site, we know the family name. So all the personal, I mean, coins, they're not personal. They're a good find, but they're not personal. Uh, that, it could have been anybody who dropped it. That's right. But when you're finding, when you're finding that symbol, uh, belt buckle, etc., you know, a personal item, you know, it was that family. Yeah. Yeah. And it just makes it all that much more special to me here recently uh seven found a uh, spoon handle that had some initials on it 
And then uh, actually we researched it, and it was the wife of the uh, landowner. Uh, of course, the land grant was uh, Isaac Bledsoe, but then he'd sold the land to a, a Chenault, and the Chenault was uh, is the uh, initials that were on the uh, spoon handle. Yeah, and we haven't done anything with that. I've I've got those uh, I've got those clips in the can, and when we get back to that site, hunt it again. We'll uh, we'll we'll probably do something on that. But uh, that that was a nice find. And those are the you know I'm like you. I'd give anything in the world to go out tomorrow and find a large scent or a colonial copper. <laughs> I, I don't have any kind. And uh, Keebs was the first person that I contacted whenever I found my large scent last year. And uh, yep. and you sat on that for, what, three, four weeks before that uh, episode finally came out. But oh, yeah. I was so excited I had to tell somebody. And, and you know, you'd, <laughs> you'd kind of been rooting for me to find that. And uh, whenever I did, oh, yeah. you were the first person yeah. that, that I thought about. And, uh, yeah. In fact, I think I was one of your first subscribers to your YouTube channel. You probably were. Uh, blew me yeah. aw- blew me away whenever I it, it said Mister Keebler, and I think I asked you. <laughs> I said, "Is this the <laughs> is this the Keebs from uh, Stealth Diggers?" And you yeah, said, yeah. "Yeah, the one and only." You guys, yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, you guys seem like you have such a good chemistry together. Is that the case? Yes. That's great. Look. And I, I think that that, uh, that helps make your show, you know, uh, the chemistry. Yeah. And, and I'm not leaving anybody else out, but the chemistry basically that you and Charlie have is kind of the nucleus of the show and everything else kind of, uh, you know, builds into that. And uh, I like to think that, uh, you know, Jeff and I have kind of got the same kind of chemistry. Mm-hmm. And that that's what people want to see. Yeah. Nick, I see where yeah, you posted we're, we're uh uh, you just have to get out there and swing, and I mean, you just—I mean, you're not going to find relics on the couch. That's what I always tell Loy. But uh, if you get out there and swing, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you'll, sooner or later you'll find the uh, uh, colonial coppers or the uh, flying eagles, or I mean, you'll find the old yeah. coins. You just got to get out and do the research and swing the coil. Let me ask mm-hmm. you. Let me ask you another uh, question, Keith. Uh, yeah. What is your white whale? What is the one thing that you want to find that you haven't? Well, um, let's see. Well, I found a dead guy, so that's off the list. Well, I, f- I found a leg, and so I'm, I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but when we found that mannequin out in the woods, uh, uh, it was actually a dummy for hunting. Mm-hmm. And we swore up and down that it was a guy until we were like 20 feet away from it. Well, and, and this is a true story. I'm not making this up. Whenever our three daughters were probably, I don't know, they were seven, eight, nine years old. Uh, we live out in the country, and there's a big field behind our house, and the creek goes uh, down in the bottom there. And, of course, they just always go down to the creek in the summertime and just play. And, uh, whole, and a couple of, uh, well, we got a niece and a nephew that live just down the road from us. And... Uh, some of them came up the bluff and they were just screaming bloody murder. And I thought, well, somebody's fell off the bluff and they, you know, one of them's dead and, and they come running and, and, uh, they were all there except two of them. And, uh, one of them was my daughter and the other was, uh, was my nephew. And I could see them in the back and they were holding something. And, uh, they had found an artificial leg in the Creek. And I, I mean, a nice one. It's one that somebody wouldn't throw away. And I thought, well, you know, uh, the mob has killed somebody and they've dumped them in the creek. So I con- oh boy. I contacted the local sheriff and he said, uh, well, you know, we'll we'll do some searching around and see if anybody's reported missing. It rocked on there for about five or six weeks. And I, he finally called me and he said, you know, I can't find anything about it. And I said, well, what do you want me to do with this leg? You know, and he said, well, throw it away. <laughs> and the most the most comical thing, they pick our trash up on Thursday. I had this leg up out of the trash can, was watching those trash men circle that trash can, trying to figure out if they were going to pick it up or not. <laughs> I see, Rain. Jeff, are you and Lloyd related? Uh, no, we're not. We just uh, met on YouTube and uh, 
course, I believe I called, called you or uh, messaged you, and uh, we got together and started hunting. And our chemistry, like he just said, was great. So we like to do the same hunting, and uh, pretty much that we're we're about a little over an hour apart. So I mean, we just got to hunting, but he kind of wished he was related to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call him. Oh, we, 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 Go ahead. Oh, we got off the subject of my white whales. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, well, there there are two, actually. Um, I found every single state calling and pre-state calling, you know, like the uh, Novas and such, except for a Vermont copper. Okay. Charlie's found two. I've found zero Vermont coppers. So I'd really love to find a Vermont copper. Which is doable in your area, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um because uh, Charlie's found them here in New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, uh, and and uh, well, um, a George Washington button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd give anything in the world to find one of those, but we're not going to find one of those in our yeah. area. But uh, there are a relatively, uh, you, you know, uh, they're there. You can find them where you're at. What's yours, they, Jeff? They are. They're common. Yeah. What is, what's something that you haven't found that you want to find? Well, besides the gold coin? Yeah, besides the gold coin. Okay. Well, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, I haven't found. Of course, I have, I've been blessed, and then I'd say a flying eagle. I mean, I've never found a flying eagle. I've got one flying eagle, and it came off of... Uh, off of uh, our Civil War camp here that uh, John Hunt Morgan raided. I've also got a tram that I found off of that. Uh, and Now you're saying a flying eagle button or no, coin? No, coin. Coin, coin yes. Yeah. yeah. Coin, okay, yeah. Flying eagle coin. Mine is still a half dime. I haven't found a half oh. dime. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick said my favorite find was a bug out container. Keebler found oh. that rock wall. <laughs> those, those were, we weren't sure if there was bodies in those containers at first. That was something else. And Gordon, do you hunt creeks or, uh, let's see, do you hunt uh, the creeks versus detecting or magnets? No, using a magnet. Using a magnet. No, we don't do that. Uh, I'm good friends with, uh, with bird dog and bird dog does a lot of that and uh, we're thinking about doing that this next year i've hunted the creeks probably uh six or seven times and i mean it, it's it's fun to do but i mean you get in these deep holes and then i was always by myself and then of course it's something about a deep hole of water you don't know what's in there and then being by yourself it just i don't like that so yeah For- we, we send mag we send magnets down we find a lot of wells at these home sites so we, we send magnets down. We don't pull up anything but trash. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not going to get anything but iron is all that you're going to get with it, you know. But uh, yeah. at some of these old sites, you know, uh, the iron is, uh, is uh, you know, it's a good relic. Speaking of that, yeah. how do how do you guys like to approach a brand new site that you're about to hunt? Do you have a certain technique or method that you use? Uh, yes. Uh, well, for one thing, as you know, watching the... Uh, oh, uh, one, one, one question here from Zanny. How many ukuleles do I have? I have 44. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, when we come on to a new site, I give Charlie... Uh, the rim of the hole, always. And I immediately go orbiting. Now, orbiting is a close orbit or a long-term orbit. The, the close orbit would be the most... Uh, the, the spot that would be having the most activity between... Hello? Yeah, yeah we're, we're still here. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I had a an echo there for a minute. Okay. The activity would be between the house, the barn site, the house, 
the well site. A lot of activity there. So I'll, I'll take that and Charlie Loon, what he refers to as tickling the rim. And um, we, we both find what we're looking for in there. And then, of course, I'll follow the, uh, the walls out around the perimeter. And that's, you know, that's where I found many a, a beautiful button, coins, and that gun. Larry says, talk cellar holes since we have so many in Kentucky. We don't. Uh, and the, the sites that we have, uh, most of them have virtually no evidence that there was any occupation ever there. Yeah. Uh, I've had some but people. You didn't, go ahead. You, you didn't need cellar holes in Kentucky because you didn't really have the harsh winters where a cellar mm-hmm. hole would be needed in yeah. New England. Yeah. That's true, and uh, but we don't find uh, we don't find the uh, chimney stacks that uh, that you guys do. No. And somebody told me that here in Kentucky that uh, a lot of those early settlers that came in here used logs to make their chimney, and then uh, mm-hmm. you know chinked them with mud and what have you, and then of course those things yeah. wouldn't last. You know they'd be gone. But uh, that's what makes ours. Uh, that's what makes ours so hard to find. It's just uh, we have no maps, and uh, we will look at the oldest maps that we have and find those older, older houses. And then uh, uh, Nick says those are mudcat chimneys. I guess that's what that is. But uh, yeah. we uh, we just ha- we have to do a lot of walking and uh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, and the last hunt that we, just- that we were on, we did a lot of walking and it didn't pan out. We found like a early 1900s yeah. house but that's yeah. not what i we're mean that's after. detecting you can't yeah. i mean you have to walk and see if you can find it and if you don't you don't so yeah i say this all the time and i cannot stress it enough the land retains a memory a memory of how it was worked how it was traveled so if you tune into that and get keen to it you can walk up to any i, I can at least and charlie walk up to any site and go this is that, that there, and we, we just know that that is is where we should be. And you you can't teach that. That's just experience of you uh, doing that. Right. Well, you know, we have guests all the time, and we show them this, and you see the light bulb come, come on above their heads every time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, it's so simple. But, yes, uh, not only do you know it, you, you have to learn it. Too. Yeah, because a lot of times these cellar holes are nothing but a depression in the ground. Yep, and, and we, uh, you know, when we go on to a site, I've noticed over the last year and a half, I'm more adept now of, uh, you know, having a pretty good idea of where the house would be. Ours are always in relation to a spring or a creek or a well. And uh, I'm able to look at the, the lay of the land, uh, the episode that we've got coming up Tuesday. Uh, Jeff, uh, the landowner, took him there and they found the well and everything was growed up and we were going to have to get uh, the place bush hogged. And uh, so Jeff yeah. said, you know, where do you think the house was? And I picked a spot and I said, you know, my best bet is right there. And, mm-hmm. and we hit it dead on. Yeah, see, I'd hunted this farm for uh, probably five years. And, then, of course, I knew they had three good springs on the uh, farm. And uh, the field were always uh, was always grown up. And then, of course, I took seven on there. And then I had no idea there was going to be a house there. And then he was like, well, there, there should be a house right there. And then, sure enough, we uh, bush hogged it and cut it with a lawnmower and then, we started finding some uh, relics, but I mean, it's just, I was always into the civil war relic hunting and, uh, I hit a couple of colonial spots, but uh, now that men sevens together, I'm getting more into the colonial sites. Nick put up a link. Yeah. Uh, Nick Haas put up a link here on the mudcat chimneys that, uh, uh, w- and I'm sure that he is the one that told me that I, because I've seen that site. And uh, it, it's informative to go and look at that. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, then, you know, that's why we, that's why we don't find the, the, as many chimney stacks as we do. Now, there's more of them in Tennessee, but there's rock walls in Tennessee, yeah. which yeah. are very rare in uh, southern Kentucky. 
for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> so, uh, how long have you been hunting, Keeves? Oh, gosh. Um, long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh, way back in... Oh, gosh. 1972. 72. I was in... I was in the... Uh, United States Army, and I was given that metal detector, which is then known as a landmine detector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and a big book. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, th that was the service. After that, probably in the eighties, I got one of those you know Radio Shack ones, and mm -hmm. uh, was finding stuff, and then moved on a little bit. And you know, at that point, it was like. A big boom around this area. Everybody was coin shooting, going for the silver coins, and they were, they were everywhere in any public land. You go and you'd be pockets full of old silver coins. You know, I got I got my first metal detector in 1975, and uh, I picked it up at a pawn shop, and there was yeah. there was a uh, a schoolhouse that was right across from my house. And that's the first place that I took it, and nobody was detecting back then. And I have no idea how many silver coins I found that first day. You know, just mercury dimes, you just had pockets full. Oh, of them. yeah. <laughs> and Washington yeah. Quarters and, uh, you know, Standing Liberty. And, I mean, they, they were just everywhere. But I think, that that's, yeah. I think that's influenced me uh, a great deal because – you know, I don't have any anything against people that coin shoot. It just doesn't appeal to me. Do you think that you feel the same way? Oh, um, it it, it did at a point in my in my life. It did because that's all I knew. But uh, running into Charlie and exploring history much more, it's uh, that has changed my mind completely. I mean, every so often we'll do a field. And we're finding, you know, a couple marks, uh, a standing liberty, and it's like, wow! But the thrill, it's just not the same as pulling out that Nova Constellation coin and the relics left behind from a family from the 1700s. Yeah. Well, it's like you said a while ago, uh, we don't look at coins as being a personal item. I mean, that's... Uh, exactly. It's yeah. in, uh, you know, it's in circulation for everybody. And uh, Larry put in there also the, one of the reasons why we don't find uh, chimney stacks here is uh, the supply of rocks that we have. And, uh, you know, Middle Tennessee, the spot where Jeff is from, has a lot more rocks than uh, than we do. And uh, Y'all got to talking about uh, the years you bought your first metal detector or whatever. And thank you for your uh, service, Keeps. And, uh, yeah. But uh, oh. mine was 2010 when I first bought my my first metal detector, so I'm a newbie at this. That's... Uh, yeah. Now you uh. see you see what I'm hunting with. I, I'm hunting with a baby. <laughs> 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 we'll see who finds the best finds, though. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. He does. He mm -hmm. he he's uh he's kicking my butt right now over the and and I know that you guys, uh, you and Charlie and the rest of your gang, I know that y'all feel the same way. We don't care who finds what. It's all about the team, and it's all about the video and the experience yeah, and saving yeah, the history. Yeah, and saving it. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a collective. It, it, um, gosh, you, you know, um, every so often I'll have time for myself, and I'll go out and I'll, oh, I found a copper. But there's no one to share that experience with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that's true. It, it's a great find. Yeah, it's a great find, but, you know, it's it, it just not the same. Yeah. It's almost like you wasted a find. and some, <laughs> Yes. And some people don't understand that, but when you, when you get the chemistry that we've got and you guys have got, uh, that the Hoover boys have got, uh, it's just, yeah. it's almost like if you go out by yourself and you find something other, you waste a find. And, you know, we're, we're doing a little bit of that right now because, uh, uh, Jeff has got a new baby and it's, uh, it's kind of changed his 
time frame as to what he's able to do. Yeah, someone has to babysit. Yeah. And then, so I, I've t- taken him out twice. The first time, uh, of course, I set him in his little playpen in his car seat. It was nice and warm outside. And then uh, about 15 minutes, I had to go back home. He started crying. And then uh, the second time, I maybe got an hour and a half hunt in. So, I mean, it worked out pretty good. Of course, I hunt right next to the truck while he's there. So I can't really... Yeah. Uh, do good really cause I'll just go to the old uh, spots that I've had in the last several years but uh, but uh, yeah. and you know Jeff a lot of people have been asking when are they going to see a picture of, of, of your child well let's see when <laughs> we're on our next video the, not this coming but the next one we'll post a picture yeah we we need to put one on oh, okay. of course he's covered my Facebook page up you can go to my Facebook page right yeah that's oh, uh okay. That's uh, Jeff Warwick, W A R R I C K. He has mm-hmm. a Facebook page, and it's got slash Tennessee Jeff. But yeah, I guess if you put Tennessee Jeff in, that you'd find it. But we yeah, need, maybe. yeah, we need to put one up because I've, Thank you, I've had I've had several people that have asked that. Uh, Bear Digger said he's got a saw beat. He got his back in the in the sixties. Yeah, that's in sixties. Yeah, so that that's wow. that's an old timer there too. Uh, that was cutting edge right there. There's no doubt about it. It. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That that was before VDIs. You uh, you learned the machine by listening, which is most important. In fact, I wanted to bring that up. Uh, I, I like to call you Seven. Is that okay, Lloyd? That's that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've always called you Seven. Yeah. Um, Knowing that you're a musician, I'm a musician, Charlie's a musician, and other musicians I know who detect, they seem to have a better knack, I think, for the the listening of the tones. Do you find that true as well? You know, I thought about that uh, yesterday. I was thinking about, you know, some uh, topics that we could discuss, and that was one that came to my mind. I think that you're exactly right, because we're used mm-hmm. to we're used to working with tones and uh, yeah. the first detector that, well, the first few detectors that I had, they were all tones. You didn't have any VDI. In fact, I didn't get a VDI machine yeah. until probably uh, about the time Jeff started, I'd say, you know, uh, 2010, yeah. 2012, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I, don't watch my, I don't watch my numbers. Now, I will say this, and I just sold my CTX because... Yeah. It it didn't fit the kind of hunting that I do. If I if I was a coin shooter, if I went and knocked doors and I hunted yards, I wouldn't yeah. have anything but a, a CTX thirty thirty. It is a that or a yeah. or an E track. They're great machines because you can tell the difference most of the time between a pool tab and and a, a good find. But they uh, there's just too much processing that's going on in a CTX to uh, hunt these old house sites where you've just got nail after nail after nail. and uh, Yeah, hard to lock on to a good target. It is. And Jeff and I, when we hunt with our AT pros, neither one of us wear headphones, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. we run everything wide open. We, we're in iron disc, yeah. Yeah. and uh, yeah. I know you guys do the same thing there. So y'all yeah, dug a oh, target. Yeah, uh... Go ahead, Keith. Uh, just saying what you you uh, off of what you were saying, uh, Seven. When somebody hits a, a good tone, every head in the group turns. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Go running over there and watch it. And uh, yeah, that cost me a cap bust and a real. <laughs> <laughs> Here a couple of videos ago. Well, uh, maybe uh, three videos ago and and four videos ago. Uh, I found uh, I found a flat button and something else, and and the tone was so good on that flat button that here come Jeff, you know, out across the field. And he yeah, said, run right up there. Yeah, yeah. Wh- where'd you find that at? You know, and and he was hearing my tones and and what I was digging, and then he turned around and and dug a cap bust, and then on the next hunt in the same spot he dug a real, and so yeah, but uh, he didn't tell you he walked over that cap bust and just didn't hear it. I did not. I didn't get. <laughs> I hadn't got there. I hadn't got there yet. He jumped in front of my line. That's, uh, Larry asked about the uh, Tesoro. What do you know about that? Uh, me, I've never used one. I haven't either. 
I I could. But, um, I, I've been with Howard Hewitt, who uses it religiously, and he's dang good with it. Don't you think that anybody that has used their machine long enough to know what the machine is telling them, that there are a lot of, I mean, there's no uh, replacing that. You can, if you're not going to learn a machine, you can go and and spend tons of money on a new machine. But if you don't know what it's telling mm-hmm. you, it, it's not worth it, you know. You agree? I, absolutely. And like I just said uh, previously, I've yet to upgrade my my uh, X, XP Pro, uh, XP Deus, because I know exactly what the machine is telling me now. Uh, I might this winter and learn it over the winter because, you know, New England, we have a... Uh, um, nine months of winter and three months of bad sledding. <laughs> you do. It's terrible winter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, I, I may upgrade and, and learn it so that comes spring. But uh, right now, my machine tells me exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah. And you know what it's telling you. Yes. Thank you, Gordon. He said, great first show. Uh, that's, uh, thank you I very much. This. I do, too. Yep. And we're and, uh, over. We're over an hour, and I didn't. It even, went by quick. I, I, I didn't even realize oh. it. Uh, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll stay a little bit longer, eh? Hey, <laughs> yeah, bit. yeah. You, uh, you know the Jackson Brown. Won't you stay just a little bit longer? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. The... Won't you stay? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you're talking about your winters up there in New Hampshire. Uh, what do you guys do yeah. during the winter? I mean, after after the uh, ground freezes i mean you can't dig so you know we, we, we shovel snow shovel <laughs> snow stay in stay in shape um uh, no uh i uh, and charlie we uh we scope out what we're going to be doing the n- next year mm-hmm. uh, looking for those forgotten sites contemplating which sites we should go back to and uh uh, and Charlie and I, we pretty much go into music mode too. Uh, yeah, yeah. We just sit around the campfire and <laughs> do a lot of do a lot of songs. Yeah, like our, our rainy days. I mean, that's we'll sit back and do some research, and then but our winters here. I mean, we could. That's our time to relic hunt. Really, yeah, that's our, our that's our best time. Yeah, I mean, uh, I tell you what, uh, I tell you what, the stealth diggers do in the winter time. They start music Monday. Yes, uh, every Monday is Music Monday, and you you put some up there, Roy uh, Seven. Yeah, and you're you're uh, a virtuoso. Let me tell you. Well, I appreciate that. Larry wanted to know if uh, if Sheila at uh, the Old Mulkey Meeting House, which is, which is adjacent to our land, if she would let me uh, uh, hunt on that. No, that is a uh, that is a state park, and uh, you know the rules on uh, hunting government property. But I will tell you this: yeah. I worked with the archaeologist uh, on that spot because the original building that came there in 1798 was at a different location where the old log church building uh, sits now. That was uh, erected there uh, somewhere around 1809, I think. But anyway, uh, I had the honor of going over there, uh, me and a buddy of mine, Mike Turner, and uh, we went over there and uh, detected, and we were able to flag and and, and dig. Uh, I mean, we had the run of the place to find that. Of course, we didn't keep anything. We let them keep everything that we found and put them on display. But we helped the archaeologist and located where the original building was. And I know on uh, Beyond Sight and Sound uh, last night, they had an archaeologist on. And uh, metal detectorists and archaeologists can work hand in hand uh, if they will, you know. I mm-hmm. mean, we can yeah. complement yeah. one another. Yep, without a doubt. Yep. Well, I tell you what, Keebs, this has been a ball. It's been uh, three monkeys in a barrel, the three stooges. <laughs> yeah. It, it has it has been extremely fun, and uh, yeah. come next November, uh, we will yeah. be back with you again mm-hmm. if, we'll if, you we, if we don't uh, if we don't get okay, you again. Yeah. 
and uh, we. I, have, I feel like Bill. I feel like Bill Murray uh, being the first guest on David Letterman. He went back every year, right up to twenty years. I mean, I'm I'm honored that you you chose me as, as your, your your first guest. Well, you're the first person that I thought of because uh, you know you need somebody that. Uh, that uh, is outgoing. You need somebody that, uh, you know, you don't have to just keep pushing to talk. And I knew that you were a talker. I knew that you were very knowledgeable and uh, you're uh, just, you're just a great guy. Yeah. And, uh, well, and, and look, there's, there's people coming in, uh, digging in, digging into yesterday. Yep. Got here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry and about that. JJ John. Hi, JJ Johnson and Craig. They're all pouring in at the last minute. This will be on. Uh, this will be on in, in the archives, mm-hmm. and uh, so uh, you know you can go and and listen to the whole program and uh, give us all of your. Uh, you know, I know that you uh, you're with the Stealth Diggers. Uh, you guys need to check out their YouTube channel. Uh, they have a great mm-hmm. channel. It's a great group, and uh, they yeah. make they make oh, a, have- they make a great show. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I have a YouTube channel, too, called Mr. Keebler. Yeah. If nobody knows about that, <laughs> it's, it's a very modest, very modest channel. It's just me basically playing and singing, and uh, there's other videos that are uh, just pure tomfoolery. But uh, it, it's, it's got a small following of uh, just over 300, but people enjoy it. And I'm in that I with have you. a lot of fun with that. Uh, keeps tunes. Uh, listen yeah, to the yeah, yeah. listen to the songs that you have, and uh, we're gonna let uh, we're gonna let Keeps take us out here in just a moment. With he's gonna take the ukulele and he's gonna play a song. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, be sure and check out uh, uh, mine and Jeff's channel. It's Digging with Seven on YouTube. Jeff also has a YouTube channel called Tennessee Jeff. Uh, check our yeah. channels out. Uh, I've got a Digging with Seven uh, YouTube page, and then you can go to uh, uh, Jeff Warwick on Facebook, and uh, you can check out Henry Moore, that's Keeps, on Facebook. And uh, yeah. we've got a lot of social media and everything going. Yeah. And we appreciate all the comments. And I mean, it's been a great show, I feel. I mean, if there's anything we can change, yeah. just let us know. And I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. You, can, uh, you can send uh, me an email. And, you know, give us criticism, constructive criticism, I hope. Uh, you can send it to with 7 that's all one word, at gmail.com. And we would appreciate that. Or you can put it in the chat on this right here. Uh, we certainly do appreciate everybody uh, making this uh, as successful as I thought that it was here on this. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I want to thank everybody who tuned in and contributed in the chat Larry Gordon Gordon from uh, uh, oh gosh <laughs> yeah world, uh, of world, world of Tokens yeah mm-hmm. I've just got yeah, acquainted JJ, with him yeah. Nick Patrick uh, Sheldon Nick I mean Sheldon uh, thanks so much guys for showing up and uh, I'll be back <laughs> <laughs> yes you will you sure I'll, will I'll, I'll be I'll be back You'll be Beethoven. <laughs> what uh, what tune are you going to play us here? Uh, Relic Recoverous Man. <laughs> I'm a Relic Recoverous Man. That's what I am. What I am. Because I'm a recoverous no, son, I told you. I spell it M. A. Y. And. Man. I'm a recoverous man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good, Keith. Uh, thank, you. thank you for joining us, and thanks to uh, to everybody that came in. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out with a song myself right here. Talk to you guys later. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You've been listening to Relics Radio, produced by Digging with Seven, Tennessee Jeff. Thanks to our guest, the Keeves from Stealth Diggers. That's me. Okay. We'll see you guys probably in two weeks. We're not going to do this every week, but uh, we'll probably come back a uh, week after next. So come back and join us on Relic Radio.